Hello, Michael here with another Redshift tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to render up the light bulb that we modeled in last week's tutorial. So the first thing we're going to do is import our model. So just go to wherever you had it. Um, if you remember in ZBrush, I exported it as three separate uh, meshes. So that's our light bulb there. We're also going to create a bit of a background. We're just going to get a polygon sphere, uh, polygon uh, plane. We'll turn off the grid. And then what we'll do is we'll grab the uh, edge for the back side and we'll lift that up so it's higher than the light bulb's uh, top. And then we select that plane again in object mode and go and hit 3 for a smooth sub, uh, subdivision. So then we can use it as a very simple backdrop. All right, so uh, let's quickly set up uh, some lights in the scene as well. So. We will go to make sure we've got Redshift enabled. All right, so we'll go up to Redshift, uh, go to Lights, go to Redshift Physical Light, point that down at our object, and then we'll quickly add in a couple of, um, well, 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 we'll start setting up the materials. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is sort out the glass for the bulb. So we'll go to um, Hypershade, and under Redshift, we'll just use the Redshift Material. We'll call this bulb glass and uh, we'll assign that to our to our glass and actually quickly rename these groups are uh, these meshes as well so this will be called bulb glass mesh so what we're going to do with this is we're going to turn the uh, the fuse weight down to zero increase the refraction transmission to 1.0. We'll link it to reflection so we can just use the reflection um, settings. Uh, we'll get a little bit of roughness happening. Actually, I'll, I'll do a standard IPR so you can see what's happening. So we'll just make sure that we've got uh, smooth subdivisions on our bulb. All right, so you know, that doesn't look too bad. Cool. So in our material, we'll add a little bit of roughness to the glass, maybe 0.15. And the main reason for this is because um, you'll notice it more when the glass is on, uh, when the yeah, light is on, it, you get a little bit more glow out of the tungsten when you do this, so um, it's a little bit better that way. Um, I'm also going to delete the bottom faces of this um, bulb. I accidentally didn't delete those when I was modeling this in ZBrush, so uh, we'll just go to face mode and delete those. And we'll just bring that edge in so it's clipping the um, the base. If you um, if you have it joined there, if you modeled it the exact same way that I did, you'll get some reflection at the bottom of the bulb. Um, so you won't see the internal base and it doesn't look quite as good. So yeah, that's gonna work a little bit better now. Um, however, one thing that you will notice is that there's quite a lot of refraction, um, which is bending of the light. So we'll go into our glass material again. Um, the refractive index for glass is actually 1.5, but if you're finding it's bending it a bit too much, you want something a little bit cleaner looking, you could just reduce it to say 1.2. Uh, maybe, maybe 1.25, because I still want to be able to see the inside base. I don't want the light to bend it so much that it doesn't actually uh, bounce into the camera, but um, at the same time, I do want it to bend a little bit so you can tell there's actually glass there. All right, we'll come back to that um, glass in a moment. Um, for the second, we will hide that. All right, so this part here, uh, we're gonna split up into a couple of different parts. So we'll have the mesh, with the mesh selected, we'll go to modeling, make sure in the modeling drop down. go to mesh, go to separate, and then we'll combine the parts that are similar. So these two center parts are similar, so we'll combine those. Um, and that's based on that's based on our reference here. So these two center parts are sort of um, smooth and specular. So and then this outside part, I'm going to actually make these this sort of um, frame part here the same material as this wire here. It's just going to be sort of a dark diffused black. Um, it doesn't super matter unless you're going to go for like the light turned off and you want to sort of really work it into a couple of different materials and uh, feel free to but uh, because I'm going to have the light on it's actually going to be uh, silhouetting most of these materials so you won't see it a whole heap 
Uh, so for the sake of time, I'm just going to make those all similar materials. So those parts and those parts there, I'm going to combine as well. So we'll call this internal center, internal outside. It's like an oxymoron, isn't it? And then this part here is going to be um, the tungsten, which is the part that's illuminated. Uh, and I just want to move subdivision on those. All right. So let's quickly chuck some materials on those as well. So just back in the Hypershade editor. Okay, so we'll do these outside ones first. They're the, uh, they're the dark, diffused, rough, very little specular on that IPR. Yeah, sort of what I'm looking for. And then we'll do those outside ones, uh, the, sorry, the inside ones. So that one there, same again, new redshift material. Call this internal center mat. Uh, we'll keep it quite light and uh, we'll assign it to that. So this part is a uh, light value and it's fairly specular. So let's increase the value of that. Uh, increase the, actually it's gonna be a bit difficult to see. I'm just gonna chuck another light in real quick. And that light's too hot. So we'll turn it down to 50 will be cool. All right, so now we're starting to see it. So I'm actually gonna create some metalness for this, just a little bit just so you get that sort of more polished reflection. Uh, so keeping the reflectivity pretty high so it looks glossy like it does there. Okay, so it's a little bit hard to tell because of the nature of the environment. It's reflecting a lot of that gray background, but um, if you look at the base here, you can see that it's just quite a clear reflection. Uh, what I've ended up doing is just um, sort of having a, a, a mid-value reflection and uh, point say 0.75 on the uh, metalness and I've just got rid of the actually I should get rid of maybe some of the diffuse ah let's keep all of it all right so something like that we'll do for now just um, it's good to have a bit of contrasting materials between this outside and the um, the internal meshes as well so now that that part's done Let's sort out this tungsten. So we want this to be a mesh light. So what we need to do is go to redshift lights, physical light, and we'll get an area light. What we need to do is then select our mesh and then select our light. Go down to area, go to uh, mesh, and then link. And what that does is it'll create a new mesh with your light link to it and then you'll need to hide your old mesh. So hide that and you'll see that we've still got that there. So we'll call this tungsten light. So now if we IPR that, it's hard to see here because we've got a couple of lights on, but that is in fact glowing. We'll get a bit further into finishing that up once we've got the rest of the material set up. All right, so finally we wanna create a material for our base. This is gonna be a rough metal. So if we look at this, sort of a little bit oxidized. Um, I'm not gonna try and hit all the occlusion and all that. I'm just gonna get a sort of varied surface metal sort of thing happening. That's pretty easy to do. So make sure you save. Let's create a new redshift material. So to, to drive our specularity, we're gonna use a uh, fractal. So we'll hit tab, we'll type in fractal. We're gonna use the fractal texture, which is just a procedural texture node, um, which will give us some sort of randomized noise that we can use to drive sort of the specularity and the um, overall roughness. Um, we're also going to plug that into a uh, HSV node, a remap HSV node that is, and that'll just allow us to control the um, value of it overall. If it becomes a bit too intense, we can back it off. So we want to plug this into the metalness to begin with. So if we select our base metal material, hit three, and then type in reflection uh, metalness and I believe this requires an alpha so we're just going to use the R channel that's fine and then we'll run a quick IPR see what's happening okay so that is doing stuff I'm just going to turn down the diffuse to be a bit darker and maybe increase the reflectivity a bit okay so we'll also work with our specularity 
So let's type roughness. Uh, we want reflection roughness. All right, so now we're getting something that looks a little bit more oxidized and metallic. It's probably a bit too oxidized at the moment. Um, if we refer to our reference, you'll notice that it's uh, not that bad off. Um, we also probably want to work with our fractal a little bit further to sort of make it a little bit finer. So if we increase the frequency a bit, yeah, we'll get something that's a little, we want these smaller sort of bits of oxidization happening. And also I will mention, um, because I just did that boring um, auto UV in Maya, um, the UV on the top's not very good. Probably if if you can UV in Maya, go right ahead, do it properly. I, I never use Maya for UVing because it just, it sucks. It breaks my heart every time I have to try and do it. I do all mine in 3D code or ZBrush if I need to. So um, fortunately that's going to be obscured mostly by the light bulb. So we're not going to see that. Mainly we're going to be seeing this. Um, so we do need it to look a little bit darker though. Uh, but I'm pretty happy with the overall uh, sort of contrasting elements we're getting there. somewhere around there on your diffuse channel to get it to get it look about right and then maybe if we go back to our hyper shader to go the hsv node so basically what i'm doing here is i'm ref uh i'm defining what the it's sort of working as a clamp it's defining what the lowest value of reflection will be and the highest value so the lower i make it on the right side the more um, specular it's going to be or well, the more sorry the more rough it's going to be and the higher I make it on the left the more that dark value is coming up yeah I kind of like that it's a nice bit of variation it's a bit rougher than this is in some ways and in some ways it's a little bit shinier at the same time uh, mainly because I'm not using the occlusion so um, sort of make a decision on how sort of rough you want yours to be think about there's good okay so yeah you can also play with your diffuse color to define the sort of difference between your reflectivity and your base color so it's going to look a little bit more metalish if you sort of run towards your darker color so something like that I think is going to look cool it's a little little bit more worn out than our reference but I kind of like it yeah sweet all right um, let's bring our glass back and run the IPR so it's starting to look pretty convincing uh, let's hide our other scene lights and just use the just use the uh, mesh light so you can see it's um, it's fairly low value at the moment so let's go to our tungsten light and you can increase it to as much exposure as you require obviously you can change the color of it or you could change the temperature so maybe like 3500 if you want a sort of warmer light I quite like the warm light myself um, even if you want to go if you want to go a bit more red sort of 2500 or strike a balance at like 3000 I might use that and uh, earlier I talked about the glass roughness so in our glass material um, one way of getting sort of the frosted globe look is increasing the roughness so you can do that if you wanted a separate roughness channel for your glass you could actually um, turn off link to ref reflection and then you could run it like that which may or may not be what you're after um, I'm not going to use a frosted one though I'm just going to give it a little bit of diffuse uh, sorry a bit of roughness mainly so I get the shadows on the silhouette um, which you can see there and so it blurs the tungsten a little bit makes it sort of appear to glow a little bit more which I like finally if you want this to uh, if you want to enable caustics for this which um, I'll warn you it's gonna create um, a longer render time overall and a lot more noise so if you want to enable caustics um, go to your tungsten light um, scroll to the caustics tab emit caustic photons um, you can emit more if you want or increase the uh, intensity you'll then need to go to your glass go to your glass shape go to visibility and enable and then cast caustic photons to so be able to view them you need to do it in final render mode otherwise it doesn't work correctly and you'll get something that looks like this mess that's fine that's accurate um, but we will need to change a couple of things 
in GI mode, make sure you're using photon mapping. This will just make your final renders a bit quicker. Uh, and then we will increase the max number of GI photons to say 800 and then increase the search radius, uh, the caustic search radius to like 0.5. And it starts to blur them out a bit more because it's a complex shade that's been casting the caustics. It's going to be a little bit, a little bit weird on the wall, but that's cool. We might actually go quite far high. So you can decide whether or not you want it to use caustics. Um, it will obviously increase your render time and the amount of noise. I'm only doing this at 16 samples, I think. Yeah, um, so if I did it like 64, um, you're gonna see a little bit of the difference, but it may or may not be worth it. Just decide on how you want to present your final render. Um, you can see a little bit of the caustics happening here, obviously on the bottom where it's reflecting, reflecting through the, the glass there, that's sort of refracting through there. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, personally, I probably won't, won't use caustics on this one. I don't think it really adds enough for it to be worth it. Um, but I'll leave that up to your discretion. So hopefully that's been a helpful tutorial for you. If it has and you liked it, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube. Um, and if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I do a couple of tutorials just like this one for this and other CG products um, every week. Also, if you want to stay up to date further or contact me, you can do so via the Facebook link in the description. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.